right. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis. And we are looking at the life of Jacob this week, and we're in the midst of our uh, devotional series, The Heroes of the Bible. And uh, Jacob, though you may not think of him like David, which we'll look at, or Moses, or John the Baptist, or Jesus, or Peter, you know, or Elijah, Jacob had a part to play, and it was an important part. You know, Jacob, his name means heel snatcher. And we looked at yesterday how God changed his nature, changed his name from heel snatcher Jacob to Israel, which means governed by God. Now, his life will radically change. Uh, Tragedy will come. Famine will come to the entire land. But God is going to use his son, Joseph. Joseph, we're going to look at him uh, in a few weeks here. But Joseph will be used to sustain the entire world, to sustain Egypt. And Jacob will think his son Joseph was dead, but he wasn't dead. You know, what is going on in your life right now that you think it's over? You know, God has left me. Tragedy struck me. It's all over. There's no coming back from this. One thing we've been saying this week about the life of Jacob is if you fall down, listen, pick something up. Learn something from it. Learn something from the life of Jacob here. You know, his son Joseph will be sold into slavery. His brothers will tell his father, Jacob, that an animal, a wild animal, killed his favorite son. Um, But it wasn't the case. And we're going to fast forward almost all the way to the end of Jacob's life here. Genesis chapter 46, verse 28. Then he sent Judah before him to Joseph to point out before him the way to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen. So Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. Listen, Joseph now had sent for for Israel, for Jacob, to come to Egypt, to come and experience the blessing and live uh, with him. He was second in command in Egypt. Obviously, wealth wealth beyond measure at this time. Wealth beyond measure. And he, uh, to Goshen to meet his father Israel, and he presented himself to him and fell on his neck. Imagine this moment. Jacob, heel snatcher, had stolen the birthright from Esau, had traveled uh, to go to see Uncle Laban. On the way, God met him with the, the ladder from heaven, and, and God had said, I'm not going to leave you. Then wrestled with God as he thought Esau was coming to kill him, and God changes his name. And then all these years, and all these children, and all this tragedy to end with him once again seeing his son Joseph again. That which he thought was dead, who he thought was dead was alive, was alive. And he presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Verse 30, and Israel said to Joseph, so this is Jacob, not his, his old nature, but his new nature. Israel, now the Holy Spirit is upon him. He's a new man, right? He's walking in the spirit, governed by God. Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die since I have seen your face because you are still alive. You know, there's something about the grace of God and the grace of God not just keeping us from living a life that is depraved and depressed and dark and dead, but there's something about the grace of God bringing us into the blessings of God. You know, the word mercy, and this always impacts me, the word mercy means God doesn't give us what we deserve. Mercy is that you deserve punishment and discipline, and God doesn't give it to you. That's called mercy. But grace is that God gives us what we don't deserve. Jacob was a recipient of grace. All of us are recipients of grace, but in Jacob's life, it just was more obvious, right? He was a heel snatcher, a manipulator. He had stolen the the blessing from his brother Esau, and now God is blessing him. He thought, oh, all the consequence for my sins has come upon me. Joseph is dead. It's all over. And there he is being summoned by his brother, his son Joseph, to Egypt, to the blessing of God. And I love Fast forward just to chapter 47, verse 7. Now, this is where Joseph brings his father Jacob to meet Pharaoh. Joseph says, Pharaoh, I want you to meet my dad. I want you to meet him. And he brings Jacob, heel snatcher, into the presence of Pharaoh. You know, you fast forward a couple hundred years to to Egypt and Moses. Pharaoh's not going to be too happy to meet one of the descendants of Israel. Israel, who is Jacob? 
But watch this. Then Joseph brought in his father, Jacob, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. It's interesting. He blesses him. You know, this is the amazing thing about a man or a woman who has been a recipient of much grace. It reminds me in the New Testament when the woman, the prostitute, came and broke the alabaster box on Jesus and dried it with her tears. And, and they said, you know, Judas and some of the Pharisees said, man, if he was really a prophet, he wouldn't let this woman touch him. Jesus said, listen, I came in your house. You haven't washed my feet. You haven't cared for me at all. And this woman hasn't stopped. She hasn't stopped weeping over my feet and drying them with her tears and drying them with her hair. And Jesus goes on to say, listen, to who has been forgiven much loves much. You see, Jacob knew the grace of God. He had experienced in his own life. He had wrestled with God and been changed from heel snatcher, conniver, to Israel, governed by God. And listen, now he was able to go to Pharaoh, a man who worshipped false gods. The Egyptians had all these false gods, and he was able to bless them and say, the Lord is for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you, and the Lord give you peace. Whatever you're going through today, the Lord bless you. He's for you. He loves you. And just walk with him today. If you've fallen down, learn something. Pick something up. Don't just get up. Pick something up with it. Learn something from it. And Father, I pray you'd bless your people today. Encourage them in your ways. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.